All right, let's have a look at, at a couple of more features here. Um, I'm going to go and reach the uh, legacy section here under the Windows menu where we have still the plugins panel to access all of the plugins. In fact, still the shortcut K, which of course stands for killer plugin. So if you have keyboard focus here, you can go with K. And I'm going to select not the filters, not the brush plugins, but specifically the miscellaneous. There's a couple of those that are new here in version 5.1. Um, there is, for instance, the audio recorder. Let me double click that. Uh, what you see, that one you can use for is essentially to quickly record an audio session. Um, howdy doody, how you doing? And the moment you stop that, um, what it's going to do is offer you to save it, uh, maybe different file name, as a WAV file. Uh, you can also go and play it back. You can also uh, change the sample rate and you know access your audio uh, properties right from here as well. So that's a quick little handy tool if you um, don't need to uh, use any other tools uh, to record your audio. Now, why would you want to record audio with a digital painting program? Well, because we have this plugin here, which uh, has been around for a while, and you can find some links to other tutorials covering it. This one is the Exposure Sheet, also known as the Mouth plugin. Uh, the exposure sheet is now at version 2.2 and there is a lot of new capabilities. One of them is that the WAV file uh, can be recorded directly here with record audio. So that does exactly the same thing. It gets to that um, audio plugin. There's another thing that's also in here and that's the frame painter. That one I want to actually show separately. <clears throat> Just let's focus on that one and that would be also one of the new ones called the frame painter. When you double click that, when you launch the frame painter, what it's asking you to do is to take the existing frames you have and stretch it or replicate it over a bunch of more frames in a different layout. Now you need to actually have already an animation in place for that. So what I'm going to do is create an animation, very simple one. Okay, let's say we're doing a stick figure or some sort of a face animation with just three or four frames. Okay, and I'm going to draw one. Uh, so there's going to be a happy face here. That will be the first frame. And then the second one, uh, maybe there will be a, a view from the side, right? With big nose, a cowboy, whatever it is. And there you go, like that. Okay, so we got these two frames and we want to do an animation that basically shows a dialogue between the two. And that's what's really easily done with it. So <clears throat> what we'll do is we'll go to that uh, frame painter right here. And we'll say we'll need a total of, oh, let's just stick with the default initially. That's... Um, 30 frames and <clears throat> hold on a second so here's the uh, frame painter and what we can see is uh, our short animation four frames um, of which only two are actually meaningful these are the two frames we currently have in here and at the bottom we have a new roll of film that we would like to populate with these two frames so what you do is you select the frame you want to work with and you can click on any of these cells to populate it in there you can also drag across it and we'll just drop it right in there so you can take this one and make it uh, eight or nine frames, okay? And then you can go to the next section here and say in our dialogue, it's now going to be the turn for this guy to talk. And that's how you create an animation with a bunch of frames, starting from just a few very simple frames. And in no time, you create something really sophisticated because you can have a nice little dialogue going between the two. Then you put in the bubbles with additional text. Uh, or you actually record the audio and you uh, tweak them out. That's what the mouth plugin is for. Um, <clears throat> and that's what we will see in more detail. Now, one of the really cool things in here is that you can click wiggle hold and have it wiggle. So the characters are not just stay, staying there in a static way. They kind of wiggle as if they were like alive. So when you shoot this, that's what's going to happen. It's now recreating a frame sequence of 30 frames in this case. And it puts those characters in there with the wiggle effect in effect as well. So you see that developing process right now. <clears throat> and uh, of course, I'm not on a very fast computer here. This one's about four years old. Um, only 1.5 gigabytes of RAM. You'll want to have something with four gigs or so. All right, and here we go. So we got a little animation and I'm playing it probably a little bit too fast here, but you know, let's go if we play it at 12 frames a second. We see how it's doing that little wiggle thing. And uh, you can have a nice little character animation with uh, starting from just two frames, you know, do an alteration between the two and get busy creative uh, from there on. And that's with PD Pro 5.1.